Throughout history and even today, snakes have been the most villainized and misunderstood group of creatures on the planet. So today, let's go over the top six snake myths and debunk them. Welcome back to the channel everyone. If you are new here, I make videos on all things reptiles and amphibians. So make sure you go down there, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload. Also, this list is not in any particular order, but I definitely did save the most ridiculous one for the end. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But with that out of the way guys, let's get into the video. Number six, your snake is measuring you to eat you. Now, the story goes that a woman had a python, and she was very close to this python. She would take it everywhere, and she would even let the python sleep in bed with her. Now, this is very weird um, and just dumb for a variety of reasons, so please don't do this. But anyways, her snake suddenly stopped eating, so she grew concerned. She took her snake to the vet. Once they were at the vet, you know, um, they started asking her questions and doing checkups on the snake. And at the end of the visit, the vet concluded that the snake was not eating, not because it was sick, but because it was preparing its digestive tract for a very large human-sized meal. The idea that the snake was, you know, preparing to eat its owner is just completely ridiculous. Um, snakes don't put that kind of forethought into their meals, right? Like a snake doesn't just see a prey item walk by and then think, Damn, you know, in a few weeks, I would have been able to eat you, but not right now, right? Um, snakes are opportunistic feeders, at least the majority of them. And definitely all of the ones that are actually big enough to eat a human are opportunistic feeders. So basically what this means is they'll just, you know, hang out somewhere, wait for uh, something to either crawl or fly by, whatever the case may be. And as that's happening, they have a split second to make a decision. Try to eat it don't try to eat it. That's it. They have a few seconds. They need to make that decision. It's quick, right? So yeah, those few seconds are about as far as their planning actually goes. It's just the way they have evolved. Um, so your snake isn't going to spend, you know, weeks or even months, you know, trying to, to figure out when is the right time to finally eat you. You know, when am I big enough to eat this person? Um, there's just no evidence to suggest that, you know, snakes have either the intelligence, forethought, or honestly, even the need to pull something like that off. Number five, snakes can dislocate their jaws. Now, if you've ever seen a snake eat, you know that they can fit some really large prey items into their mouths. Uh, there's been reticulated pythons that have eaten people. The Burmese pythons here eat gators, and even your snake at home can fit really large rodents into its mouth. Uh, because of this, the myth quickly developed that snakes actually dislocate their jaws in order to fit such large mouthfuls. However, the truth is actually much more jaw-dropping. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Unlike our jaws that are built for brute force, a snake's jaw is rigged with ligaments, tendons, and muscles that give it incredible flexibility. Additionally, their lower jaw bones are not fused together and can move independently of each other. Their jaws are also loosely connected at the back of the skull, allowing for more rotation than any other animal. This insane flexibility, however, can also get them into trouble. Occasionally, a snake will bite off more than it can chew, and they'll eat prey that ends up being too big and rupturing their stomach, resulting in death. This is why we don't feed our snakes a meal that's a lot thicker than the thickest part of their body. It's not because they can't necessarily swallow it, it's just that it could be dangerous for them to do so. Number four, venomous snake bites should be sucked out. This is one that we've all probably seen in movies or heard from someone. Personally, I heard this one from my dad when I was growing up. But basically what this myth says is that if someone is bitten by a venomous snake, you should cut the wound with a knife or something and suck the venom out in order to save their lives. Now, as badass as this would be, 
Unfortunately, uh, this method was discredited a few decades ago as it can actually make the situation worse. Snake venom spreads through the victim's body so quickly that there's no actual hope for you to suck out any significant amount of venom. In fact, a 2004 study using a, a suction device and mock venom on real human participants was conducted to test this method. The results showed that at most, uh, this method could only remove between 0.5 and 2% of the total venom load. So not only is this method virtually useless, but it also does more damage than good by delaying quick medical treatment, damaging the blood vessels and nerves around the wound, and also increasing the risk for infection due to a contaminated wound. Number three, snakes suffocate their prey. Now for this one, we're gonna need to understand the difference between suffocation and asphyxiation. Suffocation occurs when air is prevented from entering the body. So think of someone choking you or something really heavy being on your chest preventing you from actually taking in breaths. That's what suffocation is. On the other hand, asphyxiation occurs when something is interfering with the oxygenation of your tissues. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because suffocation can lead to asphyxiation, but it's not required for it. In the case of snakes that use constriction to kill, for the longest time it was believed that snakes killed by wrapping around their prey and just squeezing so tightly that the victim's lungs are unable to take breaths in just due to the insane amount of external pressure being put on them. However, what we have recently learned is that constriction works by cutting off blood flow to the organs. Of course, blood contains oxygen which is needed by vital organs such as the brain and heart in order to carry out their daily functions. So once the supply of oxygen is cut off, the victim quickly falls unconscious and then goes into cardiac arrest. So no, snakes don't kill by suffocation, they kill by asphyxiation, which honestly just sounds way more badass to me. Number two, snakes are deaf. This one comes from the fact that snakes don't have an outer ear, but they do have an internal and a middle ear. The middle ear transmits sounds to the inner ear through vibrations which are then turned into nerve impulses and sent to the brain. Now this makes snakes excellent at detecting um, anything that's walking or crawling towards them. However, as you may have imagined, they're not very good at picking up airborne sounds. However, they are not completely deaf, they just have a much more limited sound range that they can pick up. For example, snakes can... Uh, pick up vibrations between 50 and a thousand Hertz as compared to humans that can pick up vibrations between 20 and 20,000 Hertz if you're wondering if your snake can hear you when you talk to them The answer is yes our voices fall within that range for them And in fact, they may also even be able to differentiate between your voice and someone else's Number one the rolling hoop snake this is the one that you guys have been waiting for and it's just so ridiculous, so let's just get straight into it. Um, so the rolling hoop snake is a snake that is said to be found in Australia and North America. And the hoop snake will bite on to its own tail, form a hoop, and then just roll after its prey, which includes humans. Now, if that's not crazy enough, the tail also has some kind of venomous stinger to it, which it uses to, of course, envenomate its prey. So just imagine a snake turning into a wheel, rolling after you, maybe down a hill or something, and then right when it's about to catch up to you, I can just picture it letting go of its tail and turning into like an arrow with like its tail facing you and then just, you know, piercing you and killing you that way. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the hoop snake. Now, the hoop snake legend has been around since the 1700s, but the number of supposed sightings peaked during the 1930s. In fact, there were so many sightings that the United States lead herpetologist Raymond Dittmars placed $10,000 into a trust at a bank that was to be given to the first person that would provide proof of the existence of the hoop snake. Now, I'm not saying the hoop snake isn't real, but that money is still at the bank. That wraps it up guys. Those are all the snake myths for today. I honestly left out a bunch more just to kind of narrow the video down and not let it be so long. So if you guys are interested in a part two, just go down and, and let me know in the comment section below and I'd happily make it for you guys. 
Um, if you did enjoy the video, please go down and give it a like. It helps the channel tremendously. And if you're not already subscribed, please make sure to do that. Um, but that's it, guys. That's going to wrap it up for today's video. As always, thanks for watching and enjoy your reptiles.